Um, so my name's Dave Hunt. I'm a software test engineer for Mozilla, uh, and I'm also a Selenium committer. Uh, my name's Andy Smith. I work for a London digital agency called AKQA, uh, and I'm also the creator of CanvasDemos.com, which is a repository of applications and games using the Canvas element. So something that Andy and I have in common is we share a passion for the future of web technologies, and that includes automated testing, the latest techniques, but also what's happening in web development worlds such as HTML5 and Canvas. Uh, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Canvas element, uh, it was introduced as part of the HTML5 specification as a means to provide a drawable area onto a web page. Uh, using uh, JavaScript and a 2D graphics API, we can draw uh, shapes and images to uh, the Canvas, which is a bitmap. Um, there's been quite a lot of uh, developers that have started making really uh, complicated applications with this. We've got like music visualizers, graphics editing software, computer games, lots of different things. Uh, and the browser support for Canvas is getting better and better. Uh, as of today, the, all the current browsers support it. So Firefox, Safari, Opera, uh, and IE9 as well. Um, so uh, for the, I've got a few examples of Canvas applications you may have come across. Uh, the first is Arcade Fire's interactive uh, music video, The Wilderness Downtown, which uh, basically you input the street where you used to live, and um, it essentially shows you an animation of someone running, running down the street. Uh, Canvas is used to supplement this experience. Um, it uses a variety of different technologies. Secondly, I've got um, 20 Things I Learned by Google Chrome team. Uh, this is uh, web ed educational material. Uh, again, Canvas is used here to supplement the experience. Um, it's basic use of the page roles and bits like that. Uh, and then finally, I've got Pirates Love Daisies. And uh, this is a HTML5 uh, tower defense game where basically what you have to do is protect the daisies from the evil sea monsters. Uh, and this uses Canvas for the whole game area. So this is quite an intense use of Canvas. Uh, so Canvas is a pretty um, becoming quite a viable alternative to Flash, uh, especially as browsers are getting more and more powerful and uh, JavaScript engine speeds are getting faster and faster. There is, however, a limitation to Canvas. Um, normally, when we're doing running Selenium tests or automated tests, we're reacting to changes in the DOM within the page, such as, for example, if you've got a car manufacturer, um, you select the car manufacturer in a drop-down box, and the second drop-down box gets populated with makes and models. You would simply have some uh, actions in there to wait for that to be populated, and then, and then assert your checks. And all that information is available in the DOM. Uh, however, Canvas, uh, if you inspect the DOM, uh, this is all you'll see. Which isn't very helpful. Basically, there is no DOM footprint. There is no way of asking the canvas what's currently um, written, what the steps have been. Um, essentially, what we have is one-way communication. Uh, we can tell the canvas through JavaScript that we want to do um, different events. So they could be user events, keyboard, mouse, timer events, mathematical formulas, but um, essentially, it's fire and forget. You send it to the canvas, it gets written to a bitmap. That's it. Uh, so today, what we're going to do is show you how we have taken an existing canvas-based application uh, and written automated tests for it. Uh, the application we're using is uh, Helicopter, which is a canvas-based game written by Dale Harvey. So I'll give you an example of playing that now. Give us a high score. Okay. Uh, so the concept of helicopter is essentially you're flying a helicopter through a cave, and the cave is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, the cave is randomly generated each time you play, uh, and there's also obstacles that appear. Basically, what Dave is doing is he can use either the enter key or the mouse click to basically apply the thrusters to the helicopter. When he lets go of the thrusters, the helicopter starts falling. And 483 meters, not bad. I've done better. Okay. 
Right, so back to the presentation. Um, uh, so how do you create tests for an application such as a helicopter? So the first thing that I needed to do as the tester was to establish what parameters I needed to know from the application. Um, and I did this because this wasn't our application. Um, I had to do this, I had to learn about it. So basically, I played the game. Uh, I worked out the things that I would need to know, at least to start off with, is the current altitude of the helicopter and details of the cave terrain, such as the cave ceiling and the cave floor. So I provided these then to Andy, the web developer, um, to continue. So basically, uh, then I started looking through the code. Uh, as it wasn't my code, it took a while to get acquainted with. Dale had written it. Uh, he said in the afternoon, I believe. Um, so he hadn't written it with automated testing in mind. So basically started looking through the code, working out how the helicopter was flying, how the terrain was being generated, and basically uh, exposed some hooks that Selenium could um, hook into and basically expose some public variables. So once Andy provided me with these, I was able to write a simple Selenium script in Java, which uh, basically if the... Um, uh, it, with using the cave ceiling and cave floor details, I was able to work out what the lowest cave ceiling is, the highest cave floor, work out what my target altitude is. And knowing what the current altitude is, I was able then to work out whether I needed to either engage the thrusters or disengage them. And there's a few things that we learned along the way. Yes, yeah, so the first thing we learned is that this is an iterative process. Um, although we had good ideas of how we were going to fly the helicopter, um, we soon learned that we needed to constantly modify and adjust what we were um, looking for. Uh, we also disabled the obstacles. This made it more achievable. Um, it gave us less information that we needed to process, uh, so we could just concentrate on that ceiling, the floor, and the altitude. Um, uh, another thing, aspect of the game that we weren't already aware of is that it has a concept of momentum. This is basically simulating gravity. So when the, uh, in the thrusters are not engaged and the, ca and the helicopter is falling, it will fall at a faster rate as when it's climbing and the, uh, the thrusters are engaged. So we found we needed to compensate for this. Otherwise, we had a, a sort of wobble effect where the helicopter was just basically increasing uh, in, its, uh, uh, in its effect and eventually hit the ceiling or the floor. Um, another thing that we realized is there's parts of the terrain that we don't actually care about. And the main part of that is anything that the helicopter has already passed. Um, so we then just uh, we implemented a field of vision so that the, um, the Selenium script is only looking ahead of the helicopter. And finally, um, we realized that by passing so many public variables to uh, the Selenium script, that what we were doing was adding latency to our flight, which meant that the helicopter was crashing. Uh, so we minimized the number of requests we were making by putting everything into one object, uh, which we call game data. So um, I'll give a demonstration now of uh, Selenium actually playing the helicopter. And remember, this is without obstacles. So if I open my IDE here, I uh, don't think I've optimized it for this display. <laughs> um, but I'll, have, I'll show you here what we've got. At the top here, um, this is basically where we're executing the JavaScript that is going to return the, the game data public variable, as you see there. And then down here, this is where we're flying the helicopter. Uh, we're getting the current altitude from this helicopter cache. Um, the variable here is called position, and that's the current altitude. Uh, we're calling a method here, which we're then working out what our target altitude should be, and then depending on that and taking into account the momentum as, as here, we then decide whether or not we need to engage the thrusters. So if I run this, hopefully, we'll see Firefox pop up. There we go. And this is now being driven by Selenium. How far will it go? <laughs> so you'd think that it would probably get to the end of the game and win, um, especially the fact that we haven't got obstacles, so it makes it a little bit easier. However, it doesn't. It will eventually crash. I think our best score here is um, about 1,300 meters. Uh, we also found out that there was no end to the game. Essentially, uh, the cave never ends. It just gets too small. <laughs> Let's see how it does. It's doing quite well. Oh. 
Yeah. There we go. 810, that's not too bad. That's not better bad. than I did. <laughs> okay, so we had a pretty good demo working, but um, we weren't uh, as happy as we could be because we had taken out obstacles. Essentially, we had cheated. So the next thing we decided to do was reintroduce those obstacles. Uh, going back to looking at the game code, uh, I, I worked out when the obstacles were um, occurring and then provided the data for what the um, height of the obstacle was, and basically the gap at the top and the gap at the bottom. Um, so we added that data back in, but then we noticed we had a problem. Yes, so something strange was happening. The helicopter was, de was deciding to, say, go above an obstacle, thinking that that is the largest gap. However, as the obstacle approached, it seemed to change its mind and crash straight into the middle of it. Um, and this was confusing. We, we kind of needed some way of finding out what was going on here. Uh, so we decided to add some visual feedback, uh, a way for us to be able to see what the Selenium script was doing. Uh, we added a heads-up display, or HUD. And basically, what this HUD does is it provides a crosshair on the uh, game, which tells us where Selenium script is currently targeting. Uh, we also um, added a way of seeing what the field of vision was, so what data the Selenium script was processing in order to be able to work out where it thought the helicopter should fly. And with this HUD, we were then able to see what was going on. Basically, uh, the helicopter decided to say, go above the obstacle, uh, but then as more terrain information came into the screen, it decided that now the largest gap is actually below the obstacle. So it, it then changed its mind, tried to go below it, it's already too late, and it crashed into the obstacle. So what we did here, which um, greatly improved this, is we reduced our field of vision. So we're already not looking behind the helicopter, but now we're not looking quite so far ahead of it. We don't need to go all the way to the end of the cave, as, as we can see. So we just, we just uh, reduced that. Uh, the other thing we did is as the cave narrows over time, we also reduced the field of vision, so we're looking at, at a shorter distance ahead. And here's what we came up with. So this time, I'm going to run this just from the command line. And hopefully... hopefully. <laughs> Uh, so it looks a bit dark on the projector, but basically what we have is the helicopter <laughs> crashing. Um, hopefully it will settle down. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically what we have is the red cross here is where uh, Selenium uh, script is uh, setting its target altitude. Uh, the area in, in the light is the area where we're processing the data. The area in the dark is uh, data we're ignoring. The other thing we're outputting at the top left there is the current altitude, target altitude, the current momentum, and the game state. And the game state is what we're using to determine whether or not the helicopter is still running. Um, when the game's playing, it's three, and when it's crashed, it's four. Um, and basically, what we did here is we, we basically have an uh, infinite loop. Um, and when the, when the game does uh, crash, when it's game over, the distance is um, uh, recorded. And basically, I've got a little scorecard. And this meant that we could just leave this running with certain settings, such as the field of vision, and um, leave it running for a few hours, come back and see what, what were the good um, values to use. Um, you might not believe me, but the best score we've got on this is somewhere over 900 meters. <laughs> okay, so this is great. We've had fun and we've created well, we've, we've made elephants dance. Um, but what we haven't done is we haven't written any tests. So um, what this is here now, uh, we wanted to prove that it's possible to write your tests. So um, we already had a lot of the values that we needed. These two simple tests here, the first one will basically crash into the ceiling. Um, this is your starting the game, you're engaging the thrusters, you're never actually disengaging them. And therefore, you're waiting until it's crashed and then asserting that the helicopter altitude is 90, which is the position of the ceiling at the start of the game. Similarly, the second test here starts the game, never engages the thrusters, and we're expecting it to crash into the floor. So one thing that I would highly recommend in when, when you're writing your, your tests for Canvas is a very visual uh, feature of a web page. So screenshots would be uh, a very, very good idea to have, at very least, uh, when your tests fail. And this gives you a little bit of confidence 
sorry, no. Uh, <laughs> this gives you a, a way to investigate a failure, a very quick way of saying at least you're on the right page or whatever, and it can be useful. In addition, it's even better if you can have screenshots on your passes, because then you can spot check those and make sure that the final state of the game is as expected. And even better than that, have a video of your test running. Again, this is useful for diagnosing your, your failures, um, but again, for spot checking. And there's various ways you can implement videos. So how can you do this? Uh, so the first step, and possibly the most important, is you need to have a good working relationship between the developer and the tester. You both need to understand that you're both trying to build a quality application um, and that you need to work together to do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, ideally, you want to be sitting next to each other uh, or in the same room, but you need to have a good communication going between you. So from the testing point of view, you need to establish your requirements. So taking back to the helicopter, determining that I need to know what the current altitude is and what the terrain is doing at any point in time. Once you've got this information, you can then pass that back to your, your web developer. At this point, the developer needs to write the automation hooks. Um, these are the values that Selenium Script is going to use to be able to uh, process whatever the data is you need for your Canvas application. Uh, at this point, you also might want to consider visual feedback, uh, making it so that it's possible to see exactly what's going on in your tests. And then you can start writing your tests. And typically, a good practice is to write smoke tests, which cover basic functionality, but broad functionality of your application. However, that's dependent entirely on your risks of the various features of your application. You may want to focus in one area. And then finally, um, depending on what your application is, you may need to consider security. Um, if, if you have a particular game, you might not want to make it so that someone can write a test that gets the high score. Uh, and there's a number of ways you can do this. Um, one of the uh, simpler ideas is you could use obfuscation, so basically making it so that it's not possible for humans to read the code, uh, so it's harder to work out what's going on. And another thing you could do is you could have, have an extra build step in your deployment process, which either injects these test hooks into your testing and staging environments, or alternatively, you could filter them out um, from your production environment deployment. Uh, out of those two, it's probably safer to do the injection for your testing and staging, because then if that build step fails, your tests will fail, which will let you know, and you don't accidentally deploy this kind of thing to your, your production environment. Uh, so if you want to find out more information about um, automating Canvas applications using Selenium, we've uh, created a bit.ly URL, which we've nicknamed our project Selenicopter. Um, so yeah, bit.ly slash Selenicopter. So that will take you to the GitHub project for Selenicopter Pilot, which is the, uh, the actual tests and the Java. Um, but there's also a Selenicopter project, which is a fork of Dale Harvey's original project with the test hooks included. Um, what I'd like to encourage you guys to do is, if you want to uh, check it out, um, see if you can tweak some of the settings, make some improvements, um, because I think it's probably quite possible to have the helicopter succeed every time, at least get to the point where the gap to pass through is actually narrower than a helicopter. Um, and if you need to ask any questions, we're going to be at the Selenium conference all, all, uh, for the entire duration. Uh, so come and ask, or we're on Twitter or on e email. How much time we got? Three minutes. Time for one question? <laughs> nope. Okay, nope. cool. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much.